and welcome to Hour 1 of Patriots Lament. We call this the Saturday morning wake-up call. I'm just the monkey behind the machine, Steve Floyd, here to make sure that the message hits the airwaves. Joining us in the studio, as always, from Big Horn Enterprises. Say good morning to Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Steve. All right. So, another week has gone by, and we find ourselves continuing in the fight <laughs> For freedom. You ever feel, <laughs> it's a super nerdy thing to say here, but you ever feel like the rebels after Alderaan was destroyed, or you're just like, oh no, what do we yeah. do now? <laughs> they've got a Death Star and they've just wiped out one of our home planets. <laughs> May the fourth be with you today, by the way, yeah. John. That's kind of funny. It does kind of feel like that, huh? Because they do have a Death Star, a drone star. I have a little bit of uh, last week. You weren't here off having a nice time, I hope. Oh, it was a beautiful time. Good. We talked a little bit about um, Boston, that whole thing down there, and how, you know, horrible it was and everything. At the same time, three days prior to that, or Burma had uh, authorized a drone strike that killed 23 kids. Or maybe it was 63. I don't know. It was crazy. They hit a madrasa. I think it was 63 kids. So one of the little schools that they have. Yeah, because one of the teachers there was a known militant. So they hit a madrasa and killed like 63. But they're brown, so it was pretty much okay. Well, I I, uh, read an article on Lou Rockwell and uh, my friend uh, Rick reminded me of it just last night, actually. And uh, it's from... uh, Vic Pittman, who actually is going to be a guest on the show in a few weeks. And I was just going to read a little bit of this article. So he goes on, a little after 10 p.m., it's a little after 10 p.m., and a serial killer is getting ready to make his move. He's watched and waited for this moment for some time. He watches his victim get out of the cab and dig in his pockets for money. Two of his children run out to the porch to greet their daddy. The killer presses a button and watches as the victim... The taxi driver and two of his children are vaporized. Other people in the house, the man's wife, parents, and three other children are badly injured and burnt by the high explosives. The house next door partially collapses, killing an elderly woman, injuring her grandson. But this is just the beginning. Neighbors and emergency personnel arrive and begin trying to help the victims. There's chaos. Children screaming, people wailing, and the cries of of the burnt and injured. Several people are trapped under rubble. But when enough people have gathered, the killer presses the button again. Fifteen seconds later, all those at the scene are vaporized or blown to shreds. The killer high-fives his partner. In two hours, he'll be off work. They're planning to drive into Las Vegas, have some cocktails, and maybe pick up some girls. On the other side of the world, at the crime scene, the misery, grief, and suffering is just beginning. The gathering and grouping of body parts, the burials, amputations, lifetime medical traumas, the traumatized children, and destroyed lives. But tonight in Vegas, it's party, party, party for this 22-year-old serial killer from Creech Air Force Base in Nevada, some 7,550 miles away from the carnage. The biggest threat he will face tonight is a hangover. He's a drone pilot. He and his kind have redefined the words cowards, terrorists, and sociopaths. He is the new face of American warfare. He's a government-trained and equipped serial killer. But unlike Ted Bundy or John Gacy, he doesn't have to worry about getting caught because it's his job. One thing the drone terrorism assassination program has revealed to the world is how racist Americans are. American life is precious. When Americans die, we expect the entire world to weep at our feet along with us. Three Americans die in a senseless act of violence and murder at the Boston Marathon, and the entire country grieves and the president makes heartfelt speeches. But where are all the speeches and expressions of grief when the U.S. bombed the school of Chenega, Afghanistan? Didn't hear about that senseless act of violence and murder? Of course not. But this is from the U.K. paper, The Tribune. It's one of the worst incidences of the entire drone c- campaign, yet one of the least reported. This isn't the same one what we were talking about a minute ago. But a CIA strike on a madrasa religious school in 2006 killed 69 children among, among 80 other civilians. The attack on a religious seminary in Chiniga, that's probably not called Chiniga, in Bonjour Agency, CIA drones attacked on October 30th, flattening much of the school. Their target was reportedly the headmaster, a known militant, but dozens of children were also killed. 
the youngest of them, age seven. <coughs> so the CIA next decides that the teacher of the school needs to be killed. They did not kill him on his way to school or when he's alone. They wait until he's at school full of kids. Then they send the missiles. They purposely wait until they can kill dozens of children. Could Satan himself top this act of pure evil? If there is a hell, there's a special place for the murdering, drug-running, child killers known as the CIA. Hitler's SS were Cub Scouts in comparison. When the CIA decided they wanted to kill a 16-year-old American named Anwar Alawaki, they waited until he was at a Yemeni restaurant with two of his teenage friends. The drone operator fired the missiles, not only on the intended victim, but eight other people died. Anwar Alawaki was a 16-year-old American citizen who was killed while eating dinner, 16-year-old, at an outdoor restaurant when an airstrike by an armed CIA drone in Yemen on October 14, 2011. The attack also killed two of his teenage friends and five other people, which was reduced to rubble. The restaurant was reduced to rubble. He had no connections to terrorism and was searching for his father who had been killed by an airstrike, a CIA airstrike, a few weeks before. By the way, Obama approved the strike, according to the New York Times. Tough guy, real leader, child killer. Will that ever happen in the United States? Say a non-government sanctioned serial killer like Jeffrey Dahmer was in Burger King. Would the police or FBI blow up the entire restaurant and kill everyone inside to get him? If a really bad guy, robber, rapist, murderer was found to be in his house some night with his wife and four kids, would the police blow up the entire house and everyone in it to get the guy? Would the CIA bomb a school full of children in Colorado, where the 16-year-old Alawaki was from, to kill one teacher? No, because we value American life. Our military and the ghouls who give them their orders are rapidly changing for the worst how we are perceived in the world. We are murderous, racist thugs, killers of children, bombers of weddings and funerals. The logic given for bombing weddings and funerals is that there might be someone attending that they want to take out. So our great Nobel Peace Prize winning president and the serial killers he employs kill just as many people as possible. If they were at a wedding that someone who might be related to someone possibly involved with trying to get the foreign invaders out of their country, they could be terrorists. And the children probably will grow up to be terrorists also, so just kill them all. This is racism at its most extreme. We can kill them like mice because they're not like us. We lie, invade, destroy, kill, and we call them the savages. We're the most brutal, arrogant, sociopathic society this earth has ever seen. We criticize the Jews for calling themselves the chosen ones, yet we act as if we were the only people on the planet that matter. Well, you might be thinking, this rant does not apply to me. I'm not in the military. I'm not an aviation warfare specialist, as the joystick drone operators in their flight suits are called. I don't like this crap any more than the author of this piece. So my question is, what are you doing about it? Have you called your congressmen and senators and told them that you'll only support those politicians who sincerely and repeatedly call for the end of the drone murder program? About the only thing I can feel I can do about it this time is try to raise awareness. Anyone can do that in their everyday conversations with others. Letters to the editors. Do something or know that by your silence you are aiding and abetting evil in its purest forms. A drones are evil bumper sticker would be good. This is still the article. You'd probably be surprised, maybe encouraged by others, how, by how many others would comment on it. I believe that there should be a drone operator website where these punks are outed. We need a drone operator list with names, pictures, and addresses. I want to know if my neighbor, my child's friend's father, the newly hired town cop, is a murdering serial killer. They need to know even a bit of the terror that they inflict on others. They need to worry every single day like the way Afghan and Pakistani children worry, not now sending their children to school because American NATO have it of bombing schools, picnics, and any other gathering of people. That's pretty much it. One of the things he points out too is, oh, yeah, it wouldn't happen, you know, don't worry, it wouldn't happen here. And he brings up and talks about Waco and the 28 kids that were firebombed there. But I thought it was really interesting that the gist of his thing is um, that we were basically um, racist. I thought that was really, you know, we kind of laugh and joke about it a little bit. Oh, well, those are brown people. But really, he's got a good point. Those are brown people. 
and we've demonized them to the point, just like in the war, World War II, you know, we demonized the Japanese to the point to where we felt good about taking them to concentration camps, even though they, we didn't call them that, but there's no different, except we weren't burning them. We did that later. We did that. <laughs> yeah, we sure did. Millions of them. Well, um, not, no, just hundreds of thousands, not millions. We didn't, we didn't burn. We didn't incinerate millions of Japanese. Just hundreds of thousands. I thought close to a million died over the firebombing of Tokyo. I believe Tokyo was about. I think it was less than a hundred thousand in huh. in Tokyo. Well, and they weren't brown; they're yellow. But I guess all the well, it's still even if it's not a, a matter of skin color, it's still a matter of nationalism. Yes, it is nationalism at its worst. I mean, you, you think about what happened in Germany in the 1930s. Why would the people wave their flags, get all excited about this guy who's going and invading other countries? Well, it was because it was nationalism. It was nationalist pride, German pride. <coughs> we are going to make a greater living space, Lebensstrom, for the German people. What was the name of the party? The National, National Socialist Socialists. Party. Yeah. Okay, we already know that this country has gone down the path of socialism. You, you mix in nationalism. Patriotism. We are national socialists. What are we? We're yeah, not, quite we, so. We are Nazis. Yeah, very much so with a mix of that. Yeah. There's actually really no difference, especially when you look at the way of our form of government in portrayed mixing with the corporatism. The best man in my wedding now works for the TSA. He's, uh, he lives in Las Vegas. Great guy. Love him to death. But he works for the TSA. And I made a comment on one of my uh, posts on Facebook where I, I just put the two pictures side by side of the guys, the National Guard, who were stopping people and checking their papers after the Boston bombing. Side by side with a couple of Nazi troopers stopping people and checking their papers mm -hmm. in Nazi Germany. I swear to you. It looked identical, except that one was in black and white and the other was in color, and the, the, the uniforms were different. But yeah. the, the look on the faces of the person who was getting his paper checked and the, 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 the troops that were doing their job, I mean, it was like identical. I posted that and just basically said make things that make you go, hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't trying to make a big political statement. One of my other friends commented on the difference between the TSA and the SA being minimal. And my friend works at the TSA got all kinds of butthurt. He was so offended that we would compare the TSA to the Nazis. He should be offended. Well, I mean, and I asked, I I'm asked, glad he's offended. <laughs> I asked him the question. I'm like, well, what, what is your personal line? What line do you draw in the sand if they go and they ask you to do something that you won't do? He hasn't ever. He hasn't responded. I know. Maybe he's unfriended me after that. Which is, I it, it breaks, maybe he has breaks, no line. Breaks my heart to think about it. But I mean, at, at what point do you draw your line? If you're going to go and work for the government, if you're going to go and be in the military, if you're going to go and be a part of the TSA, at, at what point do you personally say, you know what? There's certain things I will not do. I won't do it for pay. I won't do it for honor. I won't do it for duty or for country. <laughs> I will not do this thing that you are asking me to do because it is wrong. For Uncle Sam, Steve. Come on, he's your uncle. He's my crazy uncle. <laughs> he lives yeah. in the basement and hasn't yeah. trimmed his fingernails. <laughs> the insane one that needs to be in an asylum. Institutionalized. I don't know. I, it's pretty uh, disturbing. I mean, so much stuff is going on here in the last few weeks, like in Boston being the epitome of what's, what's wrong. I mean, we had, you know, the armed soldiers, soldiers, military, house to house, throwing people out of their homes to search with no warrants. That Stay in your homes if you want to live. Yeah. That was what they were broadcasting on the, out of their Humvees. Until they get there, of course, and you better come out of your home if you want to live while our armored personnel carriers have 50 cows pointed at your face. Oh, and didn't they catch the, the bomber outside the area that they had cordoned off? They didn't actually catch him. One of a civilian who snuck out of his home to have a smoke saw him in his boat. Snuck out of his home, hid behind his boat, heard something, looked in there. Oh, there he is. Yeah, so that, that was outside of the cordon off area. Outside the cordon off area. And yet, all those people, down to every single one, obeyed their master 
which I don't blame him for obeying because they would have got shot. Right. But not even a peep. Where are all these people screaming and yelling? Where are all the lawsuits, at least? Instead, you know, he had the big chance, USA, USA, because they caught some 19-year-old punk. That's pathetic. I said last week that uh, I heard Obama give a speech, and I forced myself to listen to a little bit of it. It was after the deal, and he goes... You are a masochist, aren't you? <laughs> and so he goes, America has shown the world what we are made of through this incident. Well, you know, and I thought, you're right. Americans have shown the world what we're made of. We're pathetic. The town of Boston that, you know, we talked a little bit about a couple weeks ago, even the town of Samuel Adams, mm -hmm. the father of the American Revolution came from there. The Sons of Liberty, the Patriots. And now it's just a pathetic bunch of, they deserve what they have, actually. And they say, I've well, argued well, that we well, deserve what the government we can't, but they deserve it. Back off, man. Think about what you just said. How... I, if there was just one patriot, a, a true patriot still in that town, did he deserve to no, be terrorized? he doesn't. Did he deserve to be terrorized by having armed troops going door to door? No. Did the innocent children deserve to have their nightmares for the rest of their lives because of the... I said that out of anger, Steve. I'm I sorry. understand. I understand. I just, but it comes out so easily. It comes out of us all so easily. And I think that's part of the, the conditioning that we've had. Yeah, we don't deserve we, that. We deserve, we deserve our... We, we deserve, deserve our government, chains. The government we, we get. We we asked for these chains. <laughs> be, please, Massa, be me some more. Uh, I was a bad one. Co really? No. Really? No. Okay. We deserve liberty and freedom. We deserve to be secure in our homes. Our children deserve not to be terrorized, like you said. And those people over in Pakistan that are riding camels around and goats don't have shoes and barely have enough rice to live deserve not to be blown up by hellfire missiles from a drone strike. I mean, we are not accomplishing anything at all for our national security. There's no way anyone can honestly say that what we're doing what we're doing over there with these drone strikes are good because we're I don't even know how you what would you even argue that we're spreading democracy, I guess. We're giving uh, good national relations to Pakistan. I don't even know. It's frustrating. I, I it's frustrating because no one is even correct. The, the mental it. gymnastics that you have to do to justify killing three or four innocent people, children, in order to get one bad guy. I mean, you think about the kind of mental gymnastics you have to do to justify that in your mind. And then you call it collateral damage. Collateral damage. <laughs> yeah. it, that that it, it is still, it's absolutely reprehensible. And like you said, not only is no one complaining about it, people will complain about us. Complaining about it. For suggesting that, that there's anything wrong with that. We're unpatriotic. I've We're anti-American. I've asked Begich on your show on Tuesdays when he's been on about the drone strikes particular. And he just, oh, yeah, you know... <laughs> Something we definitely need to look at. Ask them about drones in America. Well, you know, it's something we definitely need to look at. I asked him about Homeland Security receiving 2,700 MRAPs. Yeah, you know, it's something we need to look at. I asked him about 1.6 billion rounds of hollow point ammunition. And he said, well, yeah, that's something we need. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check into that, Josh. And we'll get back to you, because that's some really important questions we need to be asking these people. I don't think he's ever brought an answer back. He doesn't care. None of these people do. We're, we're living in... I read something the other day about this. We're basically right now living in... Hmm. The United States of America, the, the Constitution obviously is dead... But the United States is formed in 1787, 1788. The original intent of this country, actually even calling this a country, is over. It's completely gone. We have a president who is a psychopath, claims powers that no one in their right mind, I mean, only a psychopath would claim the powers that this guy claims. And Congress 
refuses to do anything about it, refuses to stand up to them, refuses to take back their power. I mean, all the way down to little things like budgets. Where is the budget, Mr. President? Mr. Congressman, that's your job. It's not that they're refusing to take it back. They're shoving more and more of their responsibilities off. Right, giving it to and, them. And, and if you, again, if you're a student of history, that's exactly what happened in Rome. How the Republic of Rome became an empire was that the senators Senate. gave the power. Palpatine. Or Palpatine. <laughs> May the fourth be with you. <laughs> was it Palpatine? No, it was a Caesar, Julius. Oh, that's right. A Julius Caesar. I mean, he was asked to rule with a strong hand yeah. by the Senate. And it, 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 they had become a do-nothing Senate. They had become incapable of getting anything done. We need to move someone out in front of us who can lead us. You must have been watching Fox News. I think that's just what they... <laughs> yeah. we, have a, we have a government now. It's, it's not even a government, because a government is something... You know, our form of government, quote-unquote, is gone. We don't have that anymore. We have a fascist, corporatist dictatorship. This document that was written and put together in 1787, 1788, ratified, the intent that it was ratified is destroyed. These guys in Washington, these guys here in this town, none of them pay heed to anything that has anything to do with rights. When was the last time anyone's heard, besides Ronald R. Paul, I don't think it's R, besides Ron Paul, talk about people's liberties? That doesn't even doesn't even cross their minds when they pass laws. When And all of their laws now are directly to benefit big corporations. And you say something like that, and people, conservatives go, ow, you sound like a lefty against cor Yeah, against corporatism, I definitely am. I'm not a lefty. But you Republicans have got to get off your duff and figure out your conservatism is wrong. They're, the Republicans are the ones that are in bed mm -hmm. with the corporations. Now, the Democrats are in bed with uh, the unions. Yep, the social programs. Go figure. <laughs> Which is worse? Those who want to take money from others for the benefit of their friends. They, you could use that same definition for both sides. Both sides. You're going to take money from others for the benefit of their friends. Directly their friends. Yeah. I mean, we... And that, that sums up, but you know what? Be encouraged, because that sums up politics all the way back <laughs> to 360 B.C., brother. Yeah, but not in the, not in the magnitude that we see now. We, we don't have a government. I mean, this is nothing but a gang. This is a gang. Mobsters. That's we all would be better are. off if well, we had yeah. actual mobsters running because then we could just pay our protection money and, and be, be left alone. Yeah. Here we pay our protection money through taxes, and it's just that it's, it's never. Ch it's they don't leave you it's alone. They changing want more. all the time. You never know. Did you pay enough? Did I pay enough exp money? Am I going to be left alone? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait a second. It's over. I mean, the last few weeks have really hit me. This thing is over. We have no nothing that even resembles government anymore because there's nothing in there. You know, they all of them take this oath. All of them, you know, give words lip service to this document that supposedly controls them, and it is nothing. It's nowhere even in the faintest, darkest concepts of their mind when they well, do these things. All, but all you have to do though is change one meaningless oath for another one. I mean, what if what if they changed it from giving their loyalty and their fealty to a document to giving their loyalty and fealty to the man? What they have. I know. Military is now promising to obey the president. The president. It's unreal. We're done. I mean, really, pack your bags and get out because this is over, and it's not going to get any better. I want. And, and if you can't get out. Get, get ready. ready. Get ready. It's about to get really, really bad. It's going to get really, really bad. These guys are gangsters. The corporations run this country in bed with the politicians. The world banks run this country. There's no more governance going on. It's rape and pillage. Get all we can as fast as we can before it ends. I'm going to be a Viking. 
<laughs> 458 Talk is the number. We'll open up the phones after the Fox News right here on KBR Local Talk Radio 660 on your AM dial. All right, welcome back to the uh, Saturday morning wake up call right here on KBR. It's technically hour one of Patriots Lament. Uh, joining us in the studio, as always, from Bighorn Enterprises, the actually the creator of the show here, Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Hello. And I am Steve Floyd, the man of the face made for radio, your trained chimpanzee right here. Just making sure that the buttons get pushed. You ready to go to the phones? Yeah. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, hi, this is Rick. Rick, go ahead. Hey, Rick. Thanks for calling. Good morning. Hey, uh, I just wanted to call in and say uh, thanks for reading that article. That, uh, that uh, Like I told you in the email, that's been really just driving me crazy for the last... <laughs> Well, since Boston, there, yeah, especially, but more so since then. It's kind of it was yeah. uh, so ironic, right? Right, yeah, and you know uh, uh, what Steve was touching on there about it does. I, I was thinking that very thing about how it, it's it very much reminds me of Rome, and it wasn't just with Julius Caesar. You know, the Senate handed over. You know, it was a slow decline over a long period before Julius Caesar ever came along. He just happened to be the, the guy that <clears throat> had the cojones to, you know, do it at the time. So, yeah. Uh, but the Senate had given up power, you know, with Marius and Sola, they were all dictators as well, so. We can really, um, the slow fade, kind of what you're talking about, we can look back and see it starting with Abraham Lincoln. Oh, I mean, the presidential powers, the destruction of the intent of the Constitution, the formation, the United States, you know, the, the unity of the states stopped with Abraham Lincoln. And we basically have, you know, it kind of pushed along. And then with uh, Wilson, it was ramped up a little bit. And then Roosevelt, he took care of business. And, you know, with then Reagan, you had... All of them. I mean, all these presidents actually, I think, is they're not a lot. They're not different than a Caesar right now. No, I don't think they are. I, I don't know though. I mean, I, I know you like to hate on Lincoln, and, <laughs> and I and I don't blame right. you for that. But take it back a little further. What about the the Mexican War? What about the, yeah, eighteen oh, thirties, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And and what was our justification for going to war with Mexico? Because one of their because one of their republic one of the, one of their regions was breaking away yeah. and trying to become its own country, Texas had declared itself a republic. Mm -hmm. So the United States of America went in there and invaded Mexican territory to quote liberate Texas because those people had a right to self determination and what was the reward? They became subjects of the United States. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> what a reward. <laughs> And then they got punished just a few years later in the Civil War. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you got you to gotta take it further. I, I really think that no, what we're dealing... you can take it back to the beginning. We, exactly. But, it was a flawed, a flawed document, a flawed idea that man can govern himself. Well, I think it was even before that. It, at the, 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 you know, when you have bloody revolutions, you sow the seeds of your own destruction, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. So, well, and they... Yeah, especially... I mean, we see... I mean, let's just cut down to it. The only reason we had a constitution and they did all that was to pay Britain back debts because they needed a Congress to tax the states to pay off their debts. They needed a Congress. I mean, most of the people that were part of the constitutional conventions, not all of them, there were some good guys, but a lot of them owed a lot of money to different people because of the war. They wanted to get paid back. So one of the first things Hamilton did was nationalize all the state debts and monetize. personal debts and monetize them and then boom everyone loved the national government then <laughs> and it's gone downhill since day one right but i mean to an extreme lincoln was the extreme and now we see from him what's going on right now but he was, he was also a man of his time though i mean if you think about powers. if you look at the the people and you look at the writings you look at the letters of the people that lived in abraham lincoln's day he was a product of his time it wasn't like abraham lincoln woke up one morning and said i'm going to radically transform this country no he was uh, the republican party at the time which i love republicans we need to get back to the party of 
Lincoln. <laughs> wow, that's scary. That is freaking scary. Don't please don't, because that guy was a mass murderer. But he also had Spooner at the time. Not everyone was a radical socialist like uh, Lincoln was. I don't know, but I mean, today this president, his presidential powers are unstinking, unreal. They're the power the, that he has, the same powers that George Bush had. I know they're, they're the exact same they powers are. that George Bush had. I mean, the, Patri- the Patriot Act really, I think, was the piece of legislation that started the unraveling. Uh, yes, it was a death document. The the uh, and and in fact, one of those uh, missile strike uh, scenarios that you read. There happened in 2006, I believe. Yeah, and prior that to was Obama, George Bush's mm-hmm. era. Absolutely, he's the one that started the program. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no, um, we're definitely not caring about what it's, party you're from. It's a lot <laughs> easier to kill children if you can just push a button from thousands of miles away, as 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 opposed to what the Romans had to do. Well, yeah. well, what's interesting too is there is a there's one of those fellows I can't remember his name now that. Um, He's going around, and he's a former drone operator, and it got to him so bad having to kill these children and watching it while he was doing it yep. um, that he had to quit. He he did quit. and He so, refused his last order, I believe. Yeah, Brand- yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure about that. but uh, Brandon Bryant. Yeah. His name. And, uh, is he, you know, so is there he are in some jail people somewhere with conscience, conscience that, uh, conscience <laughs> that uh, uh, you know, they... they they are, you know, that's why I think, that, you know, the suicide rate is so high in our military. It is exactly why the suicide rate is so high in the military. So. No, he, he, I'm sorry, he, he did follow orders, killed a lone single child. And that was what really was the final straw. He went, yep. whoa. This know. is, I'm done. One would hope, yeah. Yeah, you would hope, but these guys still do it every day. I mean, recently those three kids that were killed picking up dung for their parents' fire and the military came out and they said, you know, because the world was kind of upset about that. They're like, hey, you guys killed three little kids from five to nine years old, five, seven, and nine. What the heck are you guys doing? I said, well, they could have been planting a bomb mm-hmm. out in the middle of that field, out in the middle of nowhere. Well, yeah, they sure could have. And so could someone anywhere. You killed three little kids. They were out there picking up dung. For the po- I mean, that's the part of the- that's what really boggles my mind, Rick. We're so worried about these people, and they're still using cow poop to heat their fires. I know, I know. I know. Well, you know, one thing I I was reading Naomi Naomi, Naomi uh, Wolf's article here from the other day yesterday or something, and she was talking about how Americans are much more skeptical of the story the government's telling uh, with this Boston Marathon thing. Yes, uh, you know, than they were. So, I mean. There is a tiny little flame of hope, possibly. That... No, there is a spark for sure. I um, I've noticed that too. Never with any of the passing scenarios that have happened. This was like every, instantly on the blogosphere deal. Is like, is this a false flag false or word. what? Exactly. False flag. None of this stuff makes sense, and it kind of even hit mainstream a little bit. Like, oh, right. You, know, you heard that. On, Glenn Beck was talking about it. You hear Lars Larson talking about yeah. it. You know. Yeah, which has never happened in the past. So that is, that's hopeful. I saw a thing which kind of disturbed me, but 39, some Pew poll, 39% of the people in America think that we can't survive without a revolution. You're right. <laughs> they think that it's inevitable. 39% of the people in America think a revolution is inevitable. Inedi- which is disturbing. It's not going to end well for anybody. anybody. <laughs> well, if we, if we certainly, I think if, uh, if Americans don't um, come to grips with uh, some form of uh, non-aggression pact or something, you know, I mean, Rick, do you recall what happened in uh, 1991? I believe in the Soviet Union. In 91 in the Soviet Union, the bloodless coup, basically. Yeah, the the entire country came. Undone. Right. It did. There was no, no fighting. There was no revolution. There were there weren't hundreds or thousands or or millions of people killed. They just basically got together in the Duma and said, "Let's dissolve. We're done." Right. And they dissolved <laughs> the country. 
I mean, there, what it, I mean, a number of the different uh, states, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and then those other places, and said, hey, look, we need to be our own country, basically, with declarations of independence, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, they all, mm-hmm. they all did that. But it, instead of having the response, the, American, uh, of the, the typical American response, you cannot leave this union. This is a sacred union before God. We're going to go in there and kill you for suggesting it. <laughs> they, they got together and said, okay, let's take a vote. How many people want to keep trying to make this work? Mm, okay, you, you, I gotcha. How many of those of you here want to make it just go away? All right, all, all of you there. Okay, <laughs> and then that's it's over. It's over, and they dissolved the Soviet Union. Right, and that was basically the masses just stopped believing in it. You know that it just wasn't. But that, and they ran out of money. Valid, it, yeah. They well, they couldn't. They couldn't pay the soldiers. But that's what helped. Every, you know, it's kind of a self-feeding. Or uh, you know, uh, uh, situation where you know if they're not getting paid, then they stop believing in it as much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. That's true. Basically, uh, consent was gone. Yeah. Because <laughs> wait, was wait, wait. So are you saying if we withdraw our consent, yeah, to be governed, that that we could right. end up having this country just dissolve it's, without a bloody revolution? I do think that's uh, that's the way it has to happen, or it's doomed. Yeah. Otherwise. Uh, and so, is that possible? I don't know. I don't know if it's possible, just based on. I've already withdrawn my consent. I we mean, were we were talking about that at the book club last night, you know, because basically, look at this. I want to say Soviet. Look at Russia now. It basically, after all this time, it turned out to be more of a regime change. They don't call themselves communists anymore, mm-hmm. but it was basically, you know, some more bad guys took over. You know, the mafia and. The, the uh, the rest of the government. I mean, I hear some people say that it is better than it used to be under the communists, but I don't, I don't you're know. not a, you're not as likely as to be taken off to a gulag and kept there indefinitely. No, but if they're, they're they'll, pre- just, if they'll just kill you on the street. If you're in the press, uh, you. you know, you and you talk against uh, Putin, you're not long for this world yeah. usually. Yeah, funny how he's uh, that guy just keeps getting voted in. He's either president, prime minister, president, prime minister. He'll be chancellor next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The, obviously, the Soviets at the time, though, when they decided to dissolve, had some sort of sanity. And I don't know that these people in Washington have any sanity. I mean, I don't think they're going to let it go without burning it to the ground on the way out. If you can't have it, no one can type of deal. Yeah. Because they're insane. Right. I, I know. Well, you know, as, as we were talking about that, too. It's like, well, which is coming first, the World War Three, the nuclear holocaust, or the, the societal breakdown when the money collapses, or, you know. Well, you can see. Or it's going to be all at once, all of them together. You can see the, uh, Yay. the government. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you can see the government literally trying to start a World War Three to keep mm-hmm. itself in power just a little bit longer, to get that nationalism going. To get people to USA, USA all the way type of deal. I know. When I saw that, Josh, I, I just about, I, I, in my mind, I was running screaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, for my car, throw everything in the car and get the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That was incredible. That was, that was so sad. It was just so sad and pathetic. I mean, it's just, here's the, here's the end. Cheering the end of our country. Yeah. Cheering the end of the country. Oh, well. We're too big anyways. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's proof. It's been proven over and over. You can't be this big and sustain. Right. So we'll see what happens to Alaska. I think it's, we got some good trading yeah. materials here. <laughs> what, you know what we also have here in Alaska, which I, I don't think enough Alaskans have really considered, is that we have everything we need here to sustain ourselves. Mm-hmm. We keep being told we don't. We have to import food. That's the lie. We just have to learn to eat different stuff. Different things. Right. We have to learn to, not, to stop eating processed food. We can grow a lot of things here that people may not, you know, they may turn their nose up now. But you know what? We could, we could make a diet on it, and we could feed everybody that's here. Well, and we have if, our resources that any, the whole world would wish to trade for. That's, well, and, and besides trading resources, think about what, what would happen if instead of just shipping all of our resources out like we've been doing for the last, what, 100, 200 years? <laughs> Alaska has been a colony basically for yeah. 200 plus years. When the Russians owned this land, it was a colony, mm-hmm. and they exported lumber and furs. And uh, then the Americans took over and started exporting gold and London and furs and fish. And don't forget the fish. And then 
uh, we became statehood, and, and it was gold and lun- lumber and fish and oil. Oil. But it's still export, 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 export. Right. You know we have iron deposits here? Mm-hmm. Enough iron deposits that if we had a foundry, we could make our own steel here? Where are they making steel in the United States of America right now? Do they? I think they might still have a limited production in Pennsylvania. They might. But right now, we are importing almost all of our steel. Every time you see a bridge being made... It's right. all imported. Yeah. Well, we've done some jobs locally here where we needed pipe and couldn't find it in the United States. Not that met the specifications. You had to buy it from, we ended up getting it from Vietnam. And the job that we were on, they're like, they said, well, you have to buy American products. I said, okay, well, here's how we can get this product. If they build it now, we'll get it in six months. So we'll get it in January. We won't be able to install it. All these homes will free. What do you want to do? Oh, and then we showed that buying it from Vietnam and bringing it over was one third of the price. We and, could make it here. I know. If we had a foundry, and if we and, don't, we have. A, isn't there some kind of coal mine down the road? There's a coal mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have cheap energy available. Three hundred years worth for the whole United States of America. Yeah. And if it was just Alaska, it'd be like, what, almost a thousand years? <laughs> Longer than I'd have to worry mm-hmm. about, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think one of the best things that could possibly happen to us here in Alaska is if the country ceased to exist. Well, it has to. What a far road we've gone in the last three years. Just, yeah, in a very short very time. Very short time. Uh-huh. When this program started, I mean, we still run the promo for it that talks about how we wanted to get back to the the founding documents and return America to its roots. Oh, I would love it if we did. If if this country, which is impossible to do, if this country changed overnight and it was ran according to the original intent of the of the ratification of the document in 1788, I would be much happier than what's going on right now. And if it were, then here in Alaska, we would be able to develop our own Absolutely. mining. We'd be a state. Own. We'd actually be a state. <laughs> and we would do what we wished. And there would be no federal government. Well, I, you know, I, I agree with you, Steve, that, uh, you know, uh, my first impulse, you know, is to run for the exits. But it's like, uh, you know, aren't you kind of, to me, it's like you're going from the frying pan to the fire and... Where are you going to go, really, that isn't going to be affected or impacted? In, you know, if the United States collapses... We will affect the yeah. world. Yes, yeah. yeah, the monetary economic yeah. situation is going to be... Well, and, and if you think about it, Rick, if you have a private, your own personally withdrawing from society, if you withdraw your consent to be governed, if you stop paying all the taxes that they say you should and only pay the very minimum that you absolutely have to to stay out of jail... Yeah. If if you reduce your your standard of living, so that you're not dependent on processed goods that are coming through the taxation machine and and benefit the corporations, if you have your own, I mean, if you basically did everything here that you would have done if you had left the country, you just leave the country without physically leaving the country. Right. Oh, what is that called? Immigration? No. Defection. Defection. That's it. You have your own personal defection. <laughs> Right, yeah, kind of declaring your own uh, independence. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, and I believe in that, you know, as, as far as you can. But um, as far as you can, yeah, as far as you can. I mean, we were talking about that last night. Uh, as far as uh, you know, at some point, you are going to have to stand up, you know, and have the spine to uh, have that M sixteen shoved in your face, and you know, and just go along with it and go to jail and lose everything you own, you know, that that could be coming your way. Yeah. Uh, you know, because if you stand up for your rights, say like that young girl on the YouTube video yes, yesterday, that you know, that's what you get. You're going to go to jail. I heard about it. Is that, 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 that thing oh, in Alaska? I'll, no, yeah, it happened here. It happened in Kodiak. I'll, yeah. I'll pull it up for you during the break. It's actually, it's too long to watch the whole thing, but I'll right. fast forward to the place where the trooper just slams her to the ground because she... Uh, basically, she went behind him, and she was obviously from the video just going for the door. Mm-hmm. But he he like spooked, right? And, and, and I, threw I, her I could to the understand ground. his initial reaction because you know, you know, if somebody surprises you to your blind side a little bit, you might go boom and bump him away. But but then his follow up to that was ridiculous. 
And that was here? That was Kodiak. in Kodiak, yeah. Huh. Are they doing anything to him? It's viral <laughs> right now. Oh, really? Yeah, that video went viral. Yeah, somebody was telling me about it yesterday, and I never, they just said, yeah, this is the, this happened in Alaska, and this and that, and I guess the lady's kid was acting like he's playing a video game or whatever, but was filming the whole thing on his iPhone. <laughs> yeah, and, well, she asked him to, after they took her to the ground, oh. she said, are you videoing this, and, and made sure that they were taping, yeah. taping it, and... Uh, but, uh, you know, and, and she was very abrasive, <laughs> but, you know, that's basically what it boiled down to is she got nailed for contempt of cop. And Yeah, by the, by the way, on Wednesday, this had 41,000 views. Now it's got 120,000 views. Wow. But well, she, I, I, what, I, what I admired about her is she stood her ground throughout the whole thing. <laughs> don't we have the right to be abrasive when well, that's people just, intrude into that's, your home? No, no, that's, that's, that was, the, that was the First Amendment. That idea that somehow you had a right yeah. to free speech, that's oh. gone. That was that was gone a long time ago. And people are all upset about the Second Amendment. None of the amendments were Then valid. the Fourth Amendment is when they can't come to your home. Uh, yeah, right. But without a, without, without a an M-16. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. So, but yeah. it's not, actually. I mean, what do we expect? <laughs> Governments have to grow. Otherwise, I mean, they can't, they can't sustain at an even keel. They have to grow. Otherwise, they disappear. It's natural for him to grow because the new guy gets in, he wants more power. And the new guy gets in, he wants more power, and he wants more power. You know, I'm the sociopathic. <laughs> yeah, path and you, leads. And when you have a Federal Reserve that prints up whatever money you happen to need for whatever need that you have, what the heck? I mean, your buddy at the bank's going out of business. Eh, give him a couple bill. Oh wait, Reagan did that. Oh, Reagan <laughs> bail, bail, bailed out banks. So we, we, we keep it down. No, he was a good conservative. Oh, actually, he was a good mm-hmm. conservative. He was. He was a very good conservative. <laughs> That's exactly what conservatives do. They still bail out their buddies. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rick. Uh, yeah, thank appreciate you, uh, you uh, good throwing that out. Guys. And he's going to be a guest in a few weeks. Awesome. Oh, that Vic. Uh, Vic, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, I, I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, it'll be good. All right, right you guys Rick, take care. Thank Thanks, you. Rick. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Teresa. Teresa. How, hey. are, how are you? Good. Where's hey, your thanks. husband? How come he's not here? <laughs> he's listening to you guys. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure he's form- formulating a good comment coming up soon. But uh, I've been, we've been listening to you guys, and um, just appreciate what you're bringing to light today. It's hard stuff, but I think everybody needs to hear it. Yeah. And um, I was uh, thinking about what you were talking about um, powers of the president and and I'm reading this book called When a Nation Forgets God Seven Lessons We Must Learn from Nazi Germany by Erwin Lutzer hmm. and I uh, just wanted to read just a little paragraph that you uh, reminded me of yeah go ahead before he destroyed the church he pretended to make friends with the church and he made it a, made a state church and encouraged all the Christians, you know, to join the state church and be under his control. And um, it says the Germans had become accustomed to the doctrine of the two spheres, which was interpreted to mean that Christ is Lord of the church, but the Kaiser, or Caesar, is after a manner of being Lord over the political sphere. Allegiance to the political sphere was as high and honorable a duty as one's allegiance to God. Indeed, allegiance God was best demonstrated by allegiance to the state. And wait, so, wait, wait, read that again. A- allegiance to God was so, was as yeah, so high he, as allegiance he, to the state. Is that what I hear? Yeah. You? No. Allegiance to God was best demonstrated by allegiance to the state. So, if you were a, a good patriot, if you were a good German, then you're going to give all your devotion. Um, to your leader, and in that way, you're honoring God. That's right. That's the doctrine that they develop. So you know, like you're talking about being a um, a good patriot today. Mm-hmm. You know, if if you and so they they blur the line. And I think that as far as resisting what's happening in our country, we see that in Germany, the um, the true church were the only ones that really resisted. But a lot of um, Christians, they thought that if they just left Hitler alone, he would leave them alone. But it didn't happen that way. You know, he ended up making them send their children to the public schools to be indoctrinated and and so forth. So I I appreciate that 
Josh asked the question, you know, what are we going to do about it? Are we just, if we sit back and we say, well, let's just be quiet and, and not agree, that's, that's not enough to make a difference. No, we have to be vocal about it at the very least. And yeah, non, non-violent it. and vocal and, and not participating, but maybe participating in something that's uh, constructive. At least in the, uh, at least in conversation. I mean, at the very least, like that article said, you know, you talk to friends every day, bring it up. And you'll probably be surprised how many people are disturbed by, like, these drone strikes. They're horrible. How is this happening? Why aren't people... I think more and more people are starting to say things about it, but you know, I think a lot of the reason why people don't is exactly what you just read, because they see allegiance to God as allegiance to the state, because we're taught well, that, think, basically. I mean, well, the, I think uh, that Christians are the only ones that have a chance to see through what's going on and to realize that you know, allegiance to the state is walk, turning their backs on God. Well, the, uh, if Christians don't stand up, then I don't think anybody will. It's just going to be. A I don't mass. have. Yeah, I don't have. I don't have a lot of hope of them doing anything. I mean, <laughs> the. Uh, I listened. To, there's this country song. I don't remember what it's called, but anyways, one of the parts in the in the the chorus says, "I got my King James and my Uncle Sam." <laughs> it's like wow. I mean, there it is. Everything permeates this God and state, God and state, God and state. State is God. I mean, it really is. The state is our new master, and worship it. How Otherwise, many, you're how many churches have American flags in their church? Almost all of them. Well, if you read this book, it's really frightening to see that we're walking down the same road that the German people did. I mean, it's not a complete parallel, but... No, it's we're a lot worse. Of similarities. I think we're worse. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, thanks for calling Thank in. Thank you. Thanks. We'll make our head explode today. All right. Coming up on the Fox News here at the top of the hour. If you haven't seen that YouTube video, all you have to do is just type in young woman being arrested for nothing, and it'll be like the top thing. It's already grown to 120,000 views. Let's make it a million, shall we? Share it with your friends on Facebook. Let people know what's going on here in Alaska. FAR Fairbanks 660 AM online at KFAR660.com. All right, welcome to the Patriots Lament here on KFAR. It's a beautiful Saturday here in Fairbanks, Alaska, but we are streaming live at KFAR660.com around the world. We're also available on your smartphone with the free tune in radio app. Isn't technology amazing? It is. And you think about how nowadays with the with the right phone. You can actually stream things live to your YouTube account. And it's no longer a matter of, hey, let me get that phone away from you if you're filming something. is If you decide to start filming the cops or whatever's going on, it could be going directly to your phone. I mean, from your phone directly to the web. And they got no way of stopping it. You can't stop the signal. Download Ustream. Ustream. I've got it on my phone. The letter Ustream. All you have to Hit do... Hit that, baby. Mm-hmm. And start recording. Go straight to your YouTube channel, to your computer, wherever you so please. And to your start, Facebook. And you, and you know what? I'm going to say it. Start filming the police. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Film, film the troopers. Film them every single time you have an interaction with them. They, they, they like to try to stop you from doing it. And they, but I don't believe there's any law against it, is there? No. Absolutely not. No. I think... Uh, no. There isn't. In fact, I mean, if if you think about it, if this had happened a year ago or two years ago before you stream, what would have stopped the troopers just from grabbing that phone away from the kid that was filming? We're talking about the 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 twenty year old woman in Kodiak who was uh, very roughly arrested, not Mirandized, not told why she was being arrested. And I mean, this is the full. This is an eleven minute video. You get a lot of context. <laughs> it, there is rough language in it, so I I can't play it on the air. I would love to, but I, it, it'd be. I mean, there's just she. She gets a little. She gets a little she's verbally. Angry. Yeah, she's angry. She uses some words that aren't appropriate for broadcast on the air. But I, uh, I've published a link on my fa- Facebook account, so you can actually go and watch this yourself, and get some of the context. They were responding to a nine one one call, but nobody at the house admitted to calling the nine one one call. The woman is opening. Is goes for the door. Clearly goes for the door. The trooper slams her to the ground. His buddy comes in, and they very roughly arrest her and escort her out to the car. 
person who had been filming on the side picked up the phone and just started following them around as they are obviously roughing this woman up, not Mirandizing her. She asks over and over and over again, why am I being arrested? Josh, you just watched it with me. What, yeah. is, what, do, they, what do they answer? They don't. When well, they say, we already told you. Yeah. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Then they say, well, disorderly conduct. Or I liked the, the end there where her dad comes out and said, what, what in the world? What are you doing in my house in the first place? Well, we were responding to a 911 call. What 911 call? Well, we don't know. Somebody we, called. Well, we got to start figuring out what the 911 calls are now before we respond. Well, apparently. If that's the, the end, end of the matter right there, it means you go in and do whatever you want and arrest people and thump them up. What a bunch but, of crap. But, I mean, you think about it. Again, if this had happened a year ago, all they, could, all they would have had to done is just taken that phone away. Yep. But now they don't know. Their actions can be going live to YouTube. Good. Which is why they're trying to pass laws now, like CISPA, to restrict the internet. The internet's a, I mean, the internet's a fantastic thing. It's a downfall. It is totally a downfall to the United States government. It's sweet. So much information instantly comes from it. They can't do anything without us knowing about it anymore. There's not necessarily anything we can do about it all the time, except for the more and more people that know about it, it's the better. The more and more people that know and wake up. I mean, it's, it's in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Come on. It's done. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Oh, wow. we got a, got a few lines that All are right. piled up here. You want to go to the phone? Sure. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Maria. Maria, what's on your mind today? I was calling about that, that gal who the video's entitled She Got Arrested for Nothing. And I think she really got arrested for standing up to the brown shirts. Um, and if no, you watch it... The blue shirts. They, <laughs> the, brown, the brown shirts are the, are the wildlife troopers. She stood up to the blue shirts. Oh, my eyes must be deceiving me. I saw brown. But... Um, no, but she uh, she was a felon, I guess. I I couldn't really tell from the video, but they were they had been called for um, somebody who had taken too many pills. Is is the story I heard later, and um, the somebody out of Anchorage told me that he had looked at it, and the EMT did show up, but before the video had started, um, they had gone, they had left. And he said once they, were, they um, she was medically cleared, their excuse for being there was over. But they were sniffing around to see if they could find something where she was violating her probation. Hmm. And they saw marijuana sitting there, and they started making a moral judgment about whether there should be marijuana there if there were children in the house. And she started out pretty calm and talking to them. And... After that moral judgment, and as it went on and they kept getting more and more aggressive, she became more and more aggressive. So I, I don't know. The only excuse I've heard so far for the troopers is that she was uh, somehow out of line for getting upset, and I totally disagree with that. She's, she's my hero. I really like what she did. And I'm really excited that the, the well, video got taken. She did everything right. I mean, she kept saying over and over again, why are you arresting me? Mm -hmm. yep. The fact that they did not tell her yep. is a lawyer's dream come true. <laughs> and and the, she kept telling, I don't know if it was her child that was videotaping, but she knew exactly what her rights were. They told the kid to get away. And then she said, no, she's fine. Yep. Keep she, filming. Yep, and she was able to assert her rights because she knew what they were. Mm -hmm. and, so, then, and, and then her family came out and stood by her, even though she was in the trooper car. Yep. Do you know yep. what happened to her? Is she in jail now somewhere? I, what, the only thing I've been able to read is that there's an investigation of the troopers, and I will find out. And all. But I, I wanted to admonish people and say, hey, please repost that video more than once. And, and talk about and it. I, and and, I, and I, I do want to say that there is some rough language in it. So it, I it, didn't hear that. Oh yeah, she she uses the f bomb a couple of times uh, when when they when they roughed her up. Which again, well, uh, I mean, if you're if you're comfortable with watching somebody getting roughed up by the troopers, 
yeah. then, then you might have to deal with some rough language at the same time. Yeah, that's the worst uh, of our but, worries. But I just, I, I just wanted to say that cautionarily because there are some people that don't like having those kind of things on their Facebook page. And they sure, don't like, sure. They don't like to post it where kids can see it. Yeah, and, and my, my bigger comment here is that in the recent past, I think most people would have said, well, she's a felon, she gets what she deserves. Right. But just like what Josh was saying about the door-to-door search uh, in Massachusetts, people said right away, that's a red flag. That's, this, does, this isn't adding up. And then um, people are starting to be a lot more aware that just because somebody isn't a quote-unquote law-abiding citizen, it doesn't mean they're wrong. Exactly. And just because you're wearing a uniform, a costume, doesn't mean you're right. Exactly, yeah. So I'm, I'm really encouraged by that. Um, there was another YouTube video a couple of weeks ago at, at, in the state, in Alaska, in Juneau. It was a pro-life protest. Oh, that was amazing. That vehicle pulled up to block them, and Parnell did nothing. A state vehicle. A state vehicle. A state he did nothing. With he a said, state employee. He did the same thing the police department in, in Kodiak's doing. We'll investigate. And then you never hear that anybody was fired. These guys need to be fired, sanctioned, whatever they do to They cop. need to be put in jail. They need to be put they in jail. Need to be put exactly. In jail. And you exactly. know what? Their supervisor needs to be put in jail, too, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Right. So this is... So, yeah. And... and uh, well, isn't Parnell head of the state police? Yeah, he's he's So he needs charge. to go to jail. Well, if he doesn't do something to punish the person responsible, he needs to be... He just announced yesterday he's going to be the governor. He's going to run for governor again. I think we need a governor that's going to fundamentally transform this state. I would and think I would so, start too. With, <laughs> I, I would start with not having a governor. I would start with kicking out the feds and getting rid of all the boroughs, but... Um, and, uh, you are such a you are such an anarchist. And, what is uh, it? <laughs> restoring rid well, of the let me go a little further. Uh, restoring our alloyal, alloyal property, or we've never, never had alloyal rights, but get the title to the minerals beneath our property. And um, what else? Oh, call a constitutional convention. So and get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, we. But but then, you know, I don't know if a governor's the answer or not. No, I guarantee it's not. Well, because if you're putting your your trust in one man to come in and solve the problem, what happens if the next man who comes in reinstitutes everything that you tried to get rid of? The people well, have to change. Fundamentally, we have to change. Which is why things like sharing this Facebook, uh, or sharing this YouTube video on Facebook, are so important. The more people see what our government is doing to us. Mm -hmm. The angrier they get about it, the more they may stop supporting it and withdraw their consent. We have to become, and this is a boogeyman word, but it's true, we have to become radicals. And mm -hmm. when you hear that word, you think, oh, you're going to go bomb and kill and rape. No, that's no. what the government does. We don't do what they do, but we have to be radicals. That's what they called, and even today, they called Patrick Henry a radical. He was radical. Because was, he fundamentally had there a was different a party once called mindset, wasn't there? I don't know. In the, in the United States? Well, and I've had a but thought lately. But his mindset was radical. Yeah, my thought lately is that individual liberty, I mean, if that's really what we're seeking, individual liberty. It's a radical no concept. no corporate solution. No. It's got to be, look at the man in the mirror, and it's individual effort. Well, and everything is individual anyways. There's really no such thing as a corporate effort because for a bunch of people to do some, it takes individuals to do it themselves for the bunch of people. There's no such thing as a group thought. There's no such thing as a group doing something. It's a bunch of individuals. We right. have to individualize. Right. That's it, an illusion. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't the, the legislature here in the state of Alaska, they pay for the, they appropriate money for the state troopers, right? Probably. So Probably, yeah. if they don't do something about it, then they need to go to jail, too. Okay. Why don't all of them? I mean, what? We you know, need, we this, need put them all in a cage. We asked this when uh, the FBI raided my house a couple years ago when um, Mike Anderson was there. We called, and Dave Giesel was great. He had a field day with it. He called all these legislators that are from around here. He called mm -hmm. the state house. He called our national people, you know, Murkowski, and I know other people did, and I was calling them too. Mm -hmm. They did nothing. They did absolutely nothing. And the state people said, well, you know, that's a, that's a federal thing, so we, our hands are tied. We don't... Well, wait a minute. This is in your state. 
if, if another government came in, if the Canadians started abducting people across the border? I don't think our state legislature would do anything. They'd be like, oh, that's, a, that's a federal issue. That's a federal issue. So we called the federal people, and they were like, well, you know, that's a, that's a law enforcement issue. You know, I guess we should have called Holder up and asked him what was going on. But that wouldn't have gotten anywhere. But if these people... These legislators, this governor, we've asked this before, if they're not willing to stand up for us, if they're not willing to admonish, at the very least, these state troopers for violating our individual liberties, what good are they? And why do we have them? Why do they get our tax money? It's just to keep us in line, isn't it? It is. It's an illusion to keep us. And, and, and there's the crux of the issue. Whoever you're seeking to validate what you're doing, there's the problem if you're not looking at the guy in the mirror. Mm. That was a good point, Maria. Yep. Thanks for the Thank call. Thank you. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Hey, this is Claudio. This is the Brazilian. Do we got any hey, Brazilian music going? we can play? I don't know. I want to get some Brazilian music. Every time you call in, we're going to play it. A little rumba. Okay, I'm going to find some. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, Talk about uh, individuals doing stuff. You, you know that guy, uh, Adam Kokesh? Yes. You ever heard about him? Oh, yeah. Okay, he's a great individual. He, and uh, here's the, Can I read some for you? You bet. Adam versus okay. the man is his yeah. website. Look what he's doing. On the morning of July 4th, 2013, Independence Day, we will muster at the National Cemetery at noon and we will step off to march across Memorial Bridge down Independence Avenue around the Capitol the Supreme Court and the White House, White House, then peacefully return to Virginia across Memorial Bridge. This is an act of civil disobedience not permitted event. We will march with rifles loaded and slung our backs to put the government on notice that we will not be intimidated and cower in submission to tyranny. We are marching to mark the high, high water mark government and to turn the tide. This will be a non-violent event, unless the government chooses to make it violent. Should we meet physical resistance, we will peacefully turn back, having shown that free people are not welcome in Washington, and return with the resolve that politicians, bureaucrats, and forces of federal government will not wel be welcomed in the land of free. You are welcome to attend an army as a supporter or armed with a recording device. If the state gets to 10,000 attendees by June 1st, we have the critical mass necessary to put this off. 1,000 actual, actual attendees. We will march. Please spread the word. Share this event and invite all your friends. So this is going to happen on June 1st? June 1st is, is the deadline, and he wants to, to know if have enough people to do that. July 4th, I believe, is when they're actually going to Independence July Day. Yes, July 4th is the march. Hmm. It's going to be pretty awesome if they pull that off. Yeah. It's going to be very scary, though. People, men with guns, oh, I wonder if they have their permits. I wonder if they're all going to get arrested for... Yeah, and without permits. Without the Imagine permits. Oh, well, wow. Adam will do it. I mean, that guy's pretty... He's a radical. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's wait, wait. A ex, Is he a man who thinks for himself? Yeah, an ex-Iraqi uh, veteran, or war veteran, Iraq war veteran. And he is... Uh, he hates the state, I and mean, he lets people know about it. This guy's awesome. He does uh, civil disobedience all the time in Washington, D.C. just sits in. I mean, nothing violent. I mean, when they come and arrest him, he just lets them take him off. I found your Brazilian music. Nice. Oh. You recognize it? Oh, I'm not quite the radio. I'm not oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go back there. Mas que nada. You know, and it doesn't take. All I was right. uh, talking to someone recently, and they were like, "Well, it's until we get so many people, the blah blah blah." And I thought, "No," and I said, "No, it doesn't take a majority of people. It just takes some people to make a change." And I, I uh, call upon Samuel Adams. Does, he said, it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. That's all it takes. And he was right. He proved it because he was not in the majority in the first American, in the quest for independence from the crown. He was not in the majority at all. He was a small minority of radicals. He was fighting the conservatives of the time, literally. 
And he was right because they won. They won their independence. And we can be free again. And it doesn't take everyone. I mean, we're not, people get so discouraged, like, well, we don't have enough. Yeah, there's so many of them and so few people that all we need is the brush fires of freedom set in their minds. They'll come around. Americans love, they don't know it, they love freedom. Yeah. They think they're free, and they love that concept. I'm free! I mean, that's why those people yout, shouted, USA, USA. It was not correct in the context context of what they were shouting it. But the reason we're is because they think, we're free. We're going to fight for our freedoms. We're going to be free people, not knowing that their freedoms were absolutely destroyed during that week. But it's in the minds of men. We just got to keep needling them, needling them pushing them along, setting the brush fires of freedom in their minds. That's going to be pretty interesting. We'll follow up on that, Claudio, and see what, uh, see how that All comes right. out with Adam. And, uh, and one, one thing about freedom, you know, I always notice here, everybody here have a little concept of freedom. Even if they don't, they're not free and they don't know they're not free, they believe in that concept, and uh, that's the great thing about the United States, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you showed me that. Uh, that was one of the great things that you showed me, you, Claudio. When we were talking about one time, you said, no, look, you don't, where I came from, that people don't even have, the word's not even in their mind. He said, here, and he said, here, even the punk skateboarder with his pants down to his knees will go up to a cop and say, you can't do that. I'm free. And that's, that's right. the one thing that we have that, that separates us from the rest of the world, I think. The people, not this not this government, the people. It separates us from that. And, and unless they just cower in their homes when the when the police come by and say stay in your homes. Yeah, but that was self preservation I think, because what could they do one guy? They they would be shot for sure, you know. They would have been shot, no doubt yeah. about it. Bang. I think that was a lot of self preservation. What 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 a gas means nobody, you know, complain. Absolutely. But I heard that this People start popping up and waking up and, and not liking that, and they start complaining now. So that's uh, good news, too. Yep. Claudio, thank you so much for the call. Appreciate right. you. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. This is Rita. Rita, what's on your mind? Hi, today? Rita. Oh, a lot of stuff. I really appreciate What's and, that? And uh, you don't know how right on you are, but you know what they rule is on is. Uh, fear and intimidation. Yep. And the, too many people are afraid. We have stood up and we're paying the price for it. Next week, they are going to auction our house off, even though it is still on appeal, even though they never had a valid court order. Nothing. <coughs> Absolutely nothing. But uh, it's a black rope gang, and uh, one will stand up for the other, and when one lies, the second one will back him up all the way. And that's what people are afraid of. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's too bad, because if more people did stand up, like uh, Joe Vogler said many, many years ago, when uh, they came down on the uh, mining uh, districts, and he said, we need to stand up because we'll be buried in paperwork and rules. And everybody went, oh, well, we'll see what happens to you. Yeah, yeah. he's dead. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he was killed. And, and, and the uh, miners are buried in paperwork and, and rules. And the miners are buried in paperwork to the point now to where they can't even go on to their own claims without a second person along. Hmm. They get fined for wouldn't it be do they know? Well, how do they know everything anymore? Wouldn't but it be I, sweet if no one showed up at the auction? Well, I tell you, they planned an auction last fall, and we filed bankruptcy. And ironically, all of this started, I think, because we were friends with Vernon's. Yeah. And, I was, too. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> Because they had tried uh, things going back uh, to 2009. And, but anyway, that's another story. But uh, when we filed bankruptcy, Vernon's also filed. 
and they stayed hours in order so that they could file motions. And uh, the day of the auction, I had a feeling, and I said, well, I'm going to go to the courthouse and see what happens. Guess what? They tried selling Vernon's property. Yep. And I asked him, I said, doesn't bankruptcy stay the sale? And she said, oh, do you have the paperwork? I said, it's not my job to have the paperwork, it's yours. And they actually did stop it at that time. But, you know, the mindset, well, they're in jail, they'll never know, and by the time they find out, it's too late. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is... This is <laughs> The state does what it's wa- what it wants. I mean, that's all it comes down to. Yeah, the, the state and the feds. No, that's what I'm. I'm yeah. not generalizing that the, word. Right. The, state. the powers that be, right? They well, do it, what they yeah. want. There's no. So much of this reminds me of an ancient story about a king named Ahab, who, who's who wanted a particular vineyard, Steve, that Steve, belonged Steve. to somebody else, but that somebody else didn't want to sell it to him. So his wife suggested, well, why don't you just go kill him? <laughs> uh-huh. So he did. That's where the IRS code and, came from. Well, you know what? I mean, you think about all these different things that have happened from Ruby Ridge to a situation Waco. like yours, Waco. I mean, how much of it has to do with the fact that the government wants the land that you're sitting on? We're up against the break. Fox News. Thanks for the call, Rita. Thanks, Rita. More Patriots Lament after this. Balanced pod. Save the king. Oh, gosh, I can't believe you ruined it. Oh, isn't that what the song is? God Save the King? No. All right. We we hoisted it. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. Josh we Bennett. We hoisted that from them Brits. From uh, Bighorn Enterprises in here today with us. I, I think guess. it's God Save the Queen now. Well, Thank it you. is now because it's a queen in charge of Britannia. What a sweet song, man. I love this song. Not just this. Ver- I love this version, but I just love this song. Well, the, the lyrics of it was rewritten for... My country, tis of thee. I mean, mm-hmm. it's very patriotic. Sweet land of liberty. Doesn't mention the government at all. It says land of liberty. To thee we sing. That's awesome. Author of liberty. This is, yeah, I love these lyrics on this thing. To Rita, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Neil Desperatum. Never despair, Rita. This is a motto for you and for me. All are not dead. And where there's a spark of this patriotic fire, we will rekindle it. Samuel Adams. 17. Well, I don't know what year that was. Well, whatever. He said it. (laughs) There you go. All right. You ready to go back to the phones? Mm -hmm. Sure. I was looking for something, but go ahead. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Welcome to the program. Yeah, USA, USA. USA. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks, Frank. Frank. Journey here. Hey, Frank, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm trying to stay out of trouble, but you know I get bored. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> this is part of the dumbing down of our government-run school brainwashing of the American citizens. And believe me, what happened in Boston, the sheep will have arrived. You know, this police state mentality just equals one world order. And I must say, we're living in the times that you cannot trust your police officers, whether they're city, state, borough, or the federal government, or your own government. You know, I know you agree with me. Our founding fathers taught us to love our country, but for our own government. Yep. And uh, I'd like to get this as far as, far as that police Gestapo tactics video on that woman. I have posted local attorney Bill Satterberg on Facebook. You know, I know he's not afraid to take on the police when they're wrong. I, I've observed him for years, and I'm willing to fork out the money uh, myself to hire an attorney, whether it's a civil attorney or a criminal case against these people. I've talked to Bill, and uh, if Maria gets hold of that, that woman, please, Maria, give her my phone number. And God bless this show, and God bless America. Thanks, Frank. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. This is Hillbilly. Hillbilly, what's Hello. on your mind today? Well, I heard several kind of statements that you made today that that indicate that you're still kind of hanging on to some kind of hope that we can turn this around. And I have to disagree. 
we're not gonna. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't see a salvation of America or whatever. I just don't want people to languish and defeat and go off and just uh and be defeatist. I mean, they I can do still, agree with that. They can still yeah, save themselves to, to a point. Right. Well, we can we can protect ourselves. Yeah. The thing is, you have to look and say, like, if I were Obama, if I were the ones that really have power, okay? You don't even have to identify them. Just in your mind, conjure up whoever it is you think has real power. Maybe you don't think anybody does, which just means that what I'm going to say is insignificant. My point is I think someone does have power. That's one of my premises. Somebody out there does have power. History does not occur just by random chance. Things happen because people want them to happen. So if somebody does have power in this country, what we have to look at is what will they do if we try to collapse the system? Like, like when Russia collapsed, it didn't turn to freedom, did it? Nope. It turned to oligarchy. One type of tyranny is always going to be replaced by another type of tyranny that's almost a universal truth, okay? And even in America, even in America, Samuel Adams was right. It doesn't take a majority to make an effective change, but it does take a majority. It takes almost a unanimity to actually enjoy freedom. You can make a change, but you'll just make a change from one tyranny to the other. And maybe it won't be quite as uncomfortable for you because you won, and therefore it will be uncomfortable for somebody else. But the fact of the matter is we won our freedom. We elected the most honorable, righteous man next to Jesus Christ that probably ever walked this planet. By unanimous consent, we had the best possible president we could have. And then he went and killed people because they wouldn't pay him taxes on whiskey. Yep. And he said himself that was the most wicked thing he ever did. Yeah. It's a perfect example of how power corrupts even a George Washington. Yeah, absolutely. The very idea that we're going to fix it for anybody other than ourselves and our immediate kin and loved ones, it just ain't going to happen. Yes, if, a, if America collapses... Alaska will go through a very brief period of time of anarchy, which is another term for freedom. But that won't last long. There's never been an anarchist state in this planet for very long. But that's that's a contradiction. There can't be an anarchist state at all. Actually, no, no, I mean was. like a state of mind. I don't mean. Okay. I don't mean. I mean right. an anarchist state of being. Okay, will not be tolerated long because the tyrannists will come in again. Just like you're never going to have a bunch of Rearranging cows that are just enjoying their summer without the rancher coming in to harvest them. So we may, if, and this is what the reason I'm saying this, because this is fairly likely. It is fairly likely that America is going to collapse. And that means there is fairly likely that we will undergo a brief period of relative freedom. And that's going to be a very critical time when we're going to have to decide what we're going to do with it. All through history, when kingdoms collapsed and stuff like this, all the people really could do, all they really thought to do, was to wait for the next tyrant to arise. Who's going to be our king now? Who's going to lead us? Yeah, right. <laughs> but we have experience, and so it is at least possible. It's never happened before on this planet, so don't say it's inevitable. But it's at least possible that when America collapses, we could create something worthwhile up here. But it will not occur unless we take into consideration the fact that as soon as America collapses, we're 700,000 people, and that's not nearly enough to take care of this place. So others will come, and they will take it. And unless we know what to do about that, we're just going to move from one tyranny to the next. And the next one might not be as nice as this one. <laughs> the next one might be yellow people that don't like white people any more than white people like brown people. And they'll treat us just the same way that we treat others. In fact, we deserve it. So that very well may be. If you believe in a God in heaven, you ought to listen to what Thomas Jefferson said when he said he feared the fact when he thought about a righteous God. Yeah. It, it brings recompense to men because he knew what we had done. Even at that early age, say Thomas Jefferson already 
was bemoaning the fact that we had been so corrupt and so wicked, and we'd done so many wicked things by the time of Thomas Jefferson. And he didn't slow down the process. He continued it. He sent out Lewis and Clark to scout out the Indian tribes so that we could kill them off. And it goes on and on. So individually and in small groups, and the way of freedom is always going to be come down to that very same thing. It's going to be a question of whether you are willing and ready to move out of Babylon. If you lust to maintain Babylon, then you will have another tyrant. Freedom can only be experienced in small villages. That is the only place on this planet we have any experience of people having a friendly society without a hierarchical government and getting along with one another is when they're in small villages. So if you truly want freedom, you're going to have to create a small village far enough away from the coming tyrant that he doesn't care about your village. There are people in Tibet who have never heard of the Chinese communists. There are people in Pakistan who have never heard of the Taliban. You see what I'm saying? But unless you're willing to live that way, then you better just adjust and say, I have to adjust to the coming tyranny, and I might as well adjust to this tyranny, because you've got to make up your mind. You're either Babylonian or you're not. But, Timothy, I mean, I get what you're saying. Doesn't it also require that you stop trying to mind somebody else's business? I mean, in, in order for you to get along peaceably with your neighbors, don't you have to stop being concerned about what they might be growing inside their house? Or what they might well, be smoking in front of their children? You have to love them. If you do not love your neighbor, then you're living in a Babylonian neighborhood. If you do not know and love and care for the people that you're living with, if you are not living with them intentionally, on purpose, in order to create a peaceful society, then you are living in Babylon. That's what Babylon is, is the very mentality of using force against your neighbor. And the only alternative to force against your neighbor is agreement between your neighbors. You can't have it any other way. There's no third way. You either love your neighbors, know your neighbors, and agree with your neighbors, or your neighbors are going to force their will on you, and you're going to force your will on them, and that's Babylon. A whole new village needs to be built up, and there are people doing it. There are villages out here that won't even care if the Chinese take Alaska after it collapses. And there's villages out there that won't care if the Russians take Alaska. But you must live that humble village existence far, far away from Babylon. There's not going to be a third way. It's ridiculous to even talk about fixing the problem. Mm. It's never been fixed in 6,000 years, and it's not going to be fixed yet. It's not going to be fixed until Jesus comes back. Right. There's really, until then, then, really even then, there's no... In this age, there's no village that's anywhere that's not known. I mean, because we have the age of drones and unknown. satellites. and it doesn't have to be unknown. The villages in Tibet are known, but they're just so far, and there's nothing out there that the communists want. So the Chinese leave them alone. They're little shepherd people up in the mountains. And you have the promise of the Bible itself that no matter how bad it gets, those little humble people will be in the mountains, and they'll be safe. The Bible says very clearly, that's why the meek are going to inherit the earth. It's because they're so far outside of Babylon that when Babylon collapses, they're the only ones left. <laughs> I like the way you think. Hey, Timothy, have you done any uh, research on how to defeat drones? How to defeat drones? Yes. How drone to... airplanes and, and even more than that, the little ones that run through the woods? Right. Um, I, I don't want to discuss them on the air. Okay. But I'd like to talk to you about that. There's actually technology something. out now yeah. where you can... Uh... They'll detect them for you and block. Well, I will say this much. The important <laughs> thing is to be able to either avoid. It's not going to be good to shoot them down because you're just bringing all kinds of attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. No. Avoidance is going to be important there. But Babylon will be thrown into the ocean. The Bible says in one hour her plagues will come upon her, famine and destruction. It'll be as though a great millstone was thrown into the ocean. And Babylon's going to be gone. And that's worldwide Babylon is going to be gone. That almost so sounds like an EMP. Of, well, what would I do then? What will I do then? If it's an EMP, then there's going to be massive amounts of chaos yeah. and people yeah. taken from people. You're not going to want to be anywhere near any town. 
But at the end of the day, what am I going to do at that time? How do I survive total collapse? That's the only thing that's going to save us. If total collapse doesn't come, well, then how do I survive tyranny? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for that joke, tyranny Mark. and chaos are the two uh, the two choices we have right now. Tyranny and, and only chaos. chaos will take us to freedom. Tyranny never takes you to freedom. That's so fact. I prefer chaos because it's closer to freedom than tyranny. I, I can I, live through chaos. I, I do, too. I, you should see my office, Timothy. I, I, I practice that. I, mean, I prefer <laughs> chaos <laughs> to the tyranny of having somebody. Welcome to my <laughs> home. <laughs> hey, thanks for the call. Appreciate you. 458-TALK is the number. All of our lines are on hold, Josh. We continue on. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Are you still there? Hello. Hey, who is this? Yeah, this is Helen Dog. What's on your mind, Helen Dog? I agree uh, about 90% with uh, Frank Turney, and I agree about 50% w- without the salvation of uh, the guy that just for some. Timothy, right? Okay. Okay. Now I'm done. All right. You just wanted to uh, voice your agreement. That's great. 458 talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, what's on your mind today? Oh, hi there. Uh, I thought Timothy asked or pointed out a very good thing. You know, he said somebody out there has the power, you know, somebody. And I think that the answer is found in Maria's call. And she talked about looking in the mirror. And that's where the power is, each individual person and what they can do. And also, Timothy brought up some good points about the possibility we could be overrun by the Chinese. But at the other hand, uh, some of the things stated by the host there about having hope or Timothy alluded to that, something the host said about having hope. I agree with that, too. We don't have to fall. We don't have to let the Chinese come in. And if we do, like Maria says, and look in the mirror and be involved and know the issues and try to encourage left-wingers not to vote, but to vote ourselves, unless we don't know the issues ourselves either, then don't vote. I've sometimes not voted because on, on certain people or bond issues, they just don't know. But it is important to try to convince the uninformed people, the low information voters, to not vote. And uh, so we have we are at the crossroads. We can either survive, or we can fall. It's up to us. And Randy, that solution though, we've talked this ad nauseum now. The the solution that you're talking about it perpetuates is why the we're violence. here. It perpetuates the violence, Randy. It's brought us to where we are now, and you know for a fact in your heart that it's not going to change anything by convincing this person to vote and convincing that person not to vote because the system itself, I mean, that's like, here's the problem, Randy. We talk about the income tax, and people go, we got to change the income tax because the income tax is bad. What we need is a fair tax or a flat tax or a blah, blah tax. When the real question is, should there be tax? Why are we stealing from people in the first place? Why is there a tax in the first place? Not what tax is fair, or what tax is moral, because none of them are. But that requires a complete shift in your thinking, Josh. And I'm it not sure, does. Randy. I'm not sure that Randy. God bless you, Randy. But I don't think that you're capable of making the shift in your mind of of doing things without government interference. If you want a road built, get together with your friends and to, and to decide how much you are going to pay and how much they are going to pay and build the road. And if your neighbors don't want to pay for the road, don't build the road to their house. Build the road for yourself. Build or, or whatever other infrastructure that, that you're... I mean, I am totally shifted on this. Uh, it wasn't even a year ago that I would have said personally that one of the chief reasons for government was for infrastructure. The government builds the roads and then the people do the business. But now I have become convinced that we don't need government for anything, Randy. And, and if you continue to t- tell me that, we, that you need to take my money to build the things that you don't want to pay for, then how is that any different than any other thug? Well, there are a lot of private roads right here in Fairbanks, and there's such a thing as toll roads, and that's true. But as far as paying for the F-22s and the uh, Los Angeles class uh, submarines and our anti-ballistic missile system in in Delta, we do need some taxes to pay for that for national security. For national security or state imperialism? To keep the Chinese from taking us over. The Chinese aren't even in. I mean, come on. The Chinese. Oh, my gosh. 
The Chinese got like a couple. I don't care if Billy's worried about the Chinese coming over here. I'm not. I'm not worried about them at all. If we collapse, China collapses. They got a trillion dollars of our debt. They're going down. The whole system is going to go down. All of Randy. them will Everybody. go down. And the Chinese have a resistance, people. Those people are ready. Mm -hmm. You wait. You want to see a revolution happen. It's going to happen in China. Those people do not like their government, and when they it almost comes, happened in 1989, yes. and when the when the chance comes again for them, they're going to rise up. Those people are going to take that government down. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be horribly bloody, but maybe not. Maybe yeah. it'll happen like it did in Russia. Yeah. At least the communist government is gone in Russia. I mean, that was the thing that the conservatives fought for. for why we needed the Cold War. We needed why the we needed all those millions in defense that. money. Why we because needed to keep building bombs. Communism and nuclear was going to How take over the world. How many nuclear missiles do we need? How many times over do we need to destroy the world before we've got enough? Well, you might miss a brown person. Nuclear weapons. I mean, can you can you answer that, Randy? Uh, well, uh, I hope we never get to that point. That, that's not the it. question. How many do we need? How many times over do we need to destroy the world? At what point can we stop spending money on nuclear missiles? Uh, well, we've cut back a lot on our nuclear weapons. And You're not answering the question. Um, how many megatons needed to destroy the world? How worldwide? much is enough before we stop just putting all of our resources into killing and, and, and trying to destroy the world so many times over? I mean, think about it for just a minute. How many times is enough before we can say, okay, we got the money for defense taken care of? We got, that's, that is a straw man argument, Randy. Well, there always has to be a continual expenditure on defense for training to keep the soldiers, uh, the, we the don't, marksmanship. We don't and, have uh, defense, Randy. We have an offensive, 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 absolutely, imperialist military. We are an empire that goes nation to nation and destroys countries to set up our own dictatorships. And, and again, some of this has to go back to the, the whole issue of when we established a standing army at the beginning of this country, we yep. were violating the very terms of, the, of getting the Constitution in the first place. And well, you, don't want to, you don't want to dismantle all our defense, do you? We get yeah. too weak, we invite Why not? Who's attack. we? Who's we? Who's we? We don't want to invite attack. We who? Who's we? I'm sorry. The United States come... military, the United States government. I the want Dark them. Lord of the Sith. Let <laughs> them be gone. We don't <laughs> need them. Thank you. Uh, my head is going to explode. Can we, can we be Please. done with Randy? All right, 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Oh, this is George. George, what's on your mind? Hey, I was really wanted to call and congratulate you guys on your show. I really like it. And what I wanted to try to uh, make a point of uh, was they're only as powerful as their propaganda. That's their biggest <laughs> weapon. Nice. Once you take the propaganda out, all they have left is the force, and they can't subjugate everybody. Have you have you yeah. seen that uh, that video of the girl being arrested by the troopers in Kodiak? I've not seen it yet, but I have heard about it. Look and, it up uh, and share yeah, it with we'll your friends on on Facebook. It's on my Facebook page right now. Yeah. If so, hey, look it up, share it with your friends. It is. I do. I, again, I'm warning. There is some rough language. She just yeah. dropped the f bomb a couple of times. But if you're okay with seeing the trooper putting a woman's face in the ground, yeah. Well, the, the thing is, they have they try to they get that herd mentality, and they have to they get everybody. The propaganda is the most powerful tool. Once you take that away from them, then you know. Once people realize what's going on, it's much harder for them to keep control. Much harder. Yep. Propaganda is the, that's why. That's why we're propagandizing right here on this radio. Well, show. It's anti-propaganda. <laughs> you guys are doing the groundwork. You know, this is what needs to happen. Well, and you got to you got to do it too, though. You got to talk to your friends about it. I mean, that's kind of the whole point that we've been saying today is that we got to talk to your friends and look at the man in the mirror, right? Please. Exactly. All right. Hey, thanks, thanks for the calling, call. man. We call got we got about a minute or two left here. Maybe he's going to phone or a call or two. Is the clock if there's left? The clock is actually a little slow. Up it was there. right last hour. I think you better change the batteries. All right. <laughs> call, are you still there? Hello. Yeah. Who is this? Yeah, I'm still. This is Joe. Joe, what's on your mind? Well, I just want to tell you that uh, almost every single thing you guys say is absolutely wrong. <laughs> you haven't I called mean, in a I while, mean, Joe. You come, at it, you come after these guys like mosquitoes, you know. One, one says this and the other says that. It's like some kind of a interrogation program or something. The fact is that the things you're saying, uh, it, you know, you can say anything you please. Because it's your radio station. You can say whatever you want. But I, I can tell you one thing. The stuff that you're saying could not work in reality. It has. People... Yeah, it can work in reality. Well, if I have a gang of 50 people and I go down to your house, I don't care how you're armed, you're going to die. That Get says it? an awful lot about who you are, no, Joe. No, that it? says, no, that what, is, says what our society is, is 
got underneath the surface. We have a lot of gangs waiting to get you. And you don't seem to understand that. Our that sounds like government. government, government the propaganda. government is, that's my gang. I like that gang. You like the government gang? You betcha, because I can vote for them, and they're, they got some restrictions on them, and they're in public. The, 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 the kind gang. of restrictions like they did on the Kodiak woman? Well, they never have done that to me in my whole life, and I'm a hell of a lot older than she is. Not yet. Or oh, maybe, yeah, they're, maybe they're you haven't pissed waiting. off the right one, Joe. They're doing it to people every day. Police officers have been gentlemen to me all my life. Now, I don't know that's what you're good. talking about. I'm glad that they're gentlemen. It, well, they they are because they're public servants. They know that. And the question is, if you get some gangster, he's not going to be nice to you. He's going to tear your head off. Yeah, they're in Washington, D.C. And no one's going to protect you. You don't seem to understand what you're saying. I mean, uh, I do quite quite well, actually. I no, know I exactly. think you do quite. You think you know. <laughs> I wonder if you, you know. if you know no, what you're saying. No, you don't listen. Because... You just talk. You don't listen. You talk. Hmm. And I, I'm, I'm listening to it, and I'm thinking, day after day, I'm listening to you guys say this stuff, and I'm thinking, if this system ever came out to what you wanted it to be, you wouldn't even be here tomorrow. This is ridiculous. I'm, I'm out. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate the. Uh, I appreciate you telling us how you really feel so that we know to be uh, watching for you to come by our house to drag us out in the street as you just... Didn't he basically just threaten to do that? Did I did I hear him correctly on that? I don't know. He was he was saying in a, situ- a scenario. In a scenario. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, people have a right... Right here on this radio show, we let everyone have their opinion. Even if they say we're idiots. That's right. We don't mind. 458 Dog is the number last call. You still there? Yeah, this is Joe. Different Joe. Go ahead, quick. Yeah, as long as I grovel and hand my gun over when I get pulled over and say, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, to the police. They're just fine to me, too. (laughs) 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 Bow down and lick the hand that feeds you. Nice call, man. Thank thank you very much. All right, we're at the end of the show. It's kind of a theme here this hour. Look at the man awesome. in the mirror. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for participating in the program with us today. Even Joe. Even Well, Both all of Joe's. all of our Joes. We had a third Joe earlier. Uh, wow. Contact information. Patriot Cement, blogspot.com, and Radio Free Fairbanks on the YouTube. We're gonna, I'm going to ask Adam Kokesh to come on the show, too, and give us some updates on what he's got going on. All right. He's pretty radical. And we'll see you <laughs> next week right here on Patriot Cement. Coming up next, it's Health Talk. Right here on Local Talk Radio, we are streaming live on the internet at KFAR660.com, and we're on your smartphone with the free TuneIn Radio app. Have a wonderful day, and uh, check out that YouTube video of the woman from Kodiak being arrested for no reason. It's 11 minutes long, and she asks the police, uh, it's got to be at least 50 times, what am I being arrested for? And they do not tell her. Watch it for yourself. Don't just believe us. Go out there and talk to your friends and ask the questions. And uh, look at that man in the mirror. <laughs> Won't you? Keep it here on KFAR's Local Talk Radio. <laughs>